Hey, good evening, good evening, and good evening. Pretty nice outside, so that's a good thing. Welcome to a Rising Shine Church on the web. Uh, it's a Sunday night, 6 o'clock, and we are continuing our study in the book of Acts. Uh, and primarily, you know, we this is week four for us, and uh, and we began we began our study, and and we I thought we were looking into the baptism in the Holy Spirit, and the reason we're still on it, and the reason we're going slow, is because I believe it's the most important event outside of salvation in the New Testament. Certainly in the Book of Acts, it is the um, the match if you would, that, that ignited, that started uh, the local church uh, way back when. And it is, in my opinion, the match uh, that will start uh, the church in 2021. Without the power of the Holy Spirit and the baptism therein, uh, it's going to be a struggle for God's church to survive in the times that we're in. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. So we continue to do that um, tonight. Like, again, we're in part four, uh, and we'll have one more week of speaking of the Holy Spirit and baptism of. And so I pray that you'll stay with us. Anyway, tonight I want to read a scripture for you. I want to look at uh, Acts chapter 2. If you have your Bible, turn over to Acts chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 1 through 4. And here we read that when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound like a mighty rushing wind came from heaven, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. There appeared to them tongues of fire being distributed and resting on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them to speak. So important that you read the entirety of verse 4. And they be and were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit in, enabled them to speak. Not as uh, one of the other apostles or the disciples, or not as uh, the minister of the church or the choir director, but as the Spirit enabled them to speak. Good, good evening, Miss Alice. Good to have you with us tonight. So the Spirit is the one. The Spirit is the one that enables you to speak in tongues. Uh, remember, uh, late uh, maybe two weeks ago, we spoke about tongues itself, and that these guys in Acts chapter 2 were speaking in languages that they were not taught at birth, but that the other people around this place where they were could understand. So they were speaking in languages uh, that were um, understandable to the people that were around. And that, that is speaking in tongues in languages that you don't know. There is also the language of God, the, the Spirit, that you're speaking, that you're praying in your heavenly language. You're praying to God, God speaking to you. This is a language that maybe nobody else knows. It's, it's your language with God. You and God are, 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 are speaking this. So I just wanted to clarify that tonight. I'm excited tonight because we're going to get into the getting ready to receive God's gift. We've done a lot of work. We've we've had um, we've we've had biblical facts about the baptism. Uh, we we've been working on that for several weeks. And one that I want you to remember is this is from um, last week, and it was the primary purpose. Listen to me. The primary purpose of the baptism in the Holy Spirit is to bring the personal boldness and power of God's Spirit into a Christian's life so that he or she can accomplish Christ's purposes with his authority. Please understand that the baptism in the Holy Spirit is not for you to do all these funky things or not for you to, to go around and prove how much power you have. It's not so that you can stand up and orotate or, or all these things. The primary purpose is so that it, it brings the personal boldness and the power of God's Spirit into your life so that you may be able to accomplish what is Christ's purpose 
with his authority. Never let this thing get out of hand. Never let this become a look at me. The second that you begin to think about, look what I can do. God, just as soon as he gave you the gift, can remove that gift from you. It is not about you, my friend. It is not about what you can do. It is about what the Spirit of God can do through you. And I just wanted to clarify that. Amen. And so tonight we're going to get ready to receive God's gift. We've looked at the biblical facts about God's gift, and now we're going to get ready to receive it. Amen. So once you realize that the baptism in the Holy Spirit is a gift God wants you to have and a gift that you want and need, you may still have questions about what might happen as you open yourself up to be baptized with the Spirit. Keep in mind that your personal experiences may differ from that of other people. Never forget that. You do not have to do, your experience don't have to be John's experience. Your experience don't have to be Sally's experience. Your experience, your personal experience, may very well and should differ from that of other people with the exception of the evidence of being baptized in the Holy Spirit, which is speaking in another language. So no one can tell you exactly how things will happen for you. But there are a few things that I want to cover tonight, and I want you to keep in mind as you do get ready to receive this incredibly powerful gift. And number one, I want you to get right with God. Repent of any sins. I mean, admit, express true sorrow for, and turn from anything that may offend God. And then... Receive the incredible forgiveness that comes from Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. This is guaranteed to you. When you admit your sins, when you express your sorrow, when you turn from them things, and when you ask God to forgive you of those sins, this is guaranteed from Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, His death and His resurrection. And then submit to his leadership in your life. If you do not get step number one right, then you will never be able to get the rest of these steps right. You must repent. You must be in right standing with Father God, and you get there through the love of Jesus Christ. That's number one. And that's as cut and dry as I can make it. I, I can't make it any simpler than that. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, you're, you, there's no chance of you being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Why would God give you His Spirit if you don't know His Son? It just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Amen? Number two, you've got to ask in faith. Ask in faith. Pray and believe that God will fulfill His promises to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Let me say it again. Pray and believe and believe that God will fill you fill his will fulfill his promise to you and baptize you in the Holy Spirit. John 14 verses 15 and 18 says this. If you love me, keep my commandments. Back up to number 1. Get right with God. Amen. 16. I will pray the Father and he uh, will give you another counselor that he may be with you sometime. No, it says that he may be with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, for it does not see him, neither does it know him. But you know him. Why? Because you have got right with God through Jesus Christ. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you fatherless. I will come to you. That's what Jesus says in John chapter 14. So there's a lot in that scripture right there. The number one, it starts out with, if you love me, keep my commandments. My friend, if you are not keeping the commandments of God, there is no way that you're going to receive this incredible gift. Why would he give you a gift when you can't be trusted with the very little things of keeping his commandments? It's simple as that. It's simple as that. Let's go on. Do not doubt. Do not doubt that you will speak in tongues 
as an initial physical evidence that you have received God's gift. You cannot let the world or other people that want to tell you, no, this is fake, that's not true, this is gibberish, and it allows, it gets into you and your faith is dampered. You know, I know God loves me, I know Jesus, and I know the Holy Spirit, and I know it promises it, but I'm a little bit worried that I'm going to do something, and I'm going to begin speaking, and, and people are going to call me a, a fake or, or, or something like that. You, you, you must not doubt that the initial evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit is to, is to, to receive uh, uh, that gift is speaking in tongues. And also, there has to be a strong desire for a greater holiness. That is moral purity, spiritual wholesomeness, separation from evil, and dedication to God. And those things should accompany your prayer. When you pray, you need to get right with God. You need to ask God, is there anything else in my life or in my actions or in my daily walk that would prevent you from trusting me with this incredible gift? Am I spiritually sound? Am I morally pure? Have I separated myself from the evil? Or am I walking on the fence? Are you walking on the fence? Well, you know, I can do a little bit of this, but I don't do a lot of that. And I can do a little bit of this, but I don't do a lot of that. Uh, are you separating yourself from evil and dedicating yourself to God? And these are things you need to be praying for. Now, prayer needs to be more I'm going to get somebody's toes today, I'm sure. I got mine this morning. The preacher did this morning. Prayer needs to be more than just a once-a-week thing, my friend. I don't mean that, I, I mean, when you go to church on Sunday, you're in there, you're sitting there, and the pastor says, let's pray, and everybody stands up, and you, you put your hands, you close your eyes, you bow your head, and you nod your head like that. You agree with what the pastor says. You agree with what the pastor says. That's a Sunday morning prayer warrior right there. Ain't got no idea what to do Monday through Saturday. But on Sunday morning, I'm standing in agreement with the pastor. Now, I agree stand in agreement with the pastor. I don't have a problem with that. But I mean, you need to have a fellowshipping prayer. You need to have a prayer that is between you and God. I mean, you need to be spending time with the Lord. You need to be seeking His face and His will and His way in your life. You need to be asking him, instead of asking him for new cars and, 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 and all this other junk that we continually bombard God with, we need to be asking him for his will and his way in our life. Father God, when you give me this incredible gift, what is it that you want me to do with it? Show to me, show to my spirit, show to my heart what it is you want me to do with this incredible gift. See, the important thing here is that you pray not what you can, what he can give you, but what you can give to the kingdom through the power that comes from receiving this great gift called the Holy Spirit. And now God's promised to take care of us. He's promised to, to give us things that we need. The Bible says if you need something, you pray and you believe, then you're going to have it. That's what the Bible says. So we're not arguing that. But this you, right now, we are looking for a gift. We are looking for the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm trying to tell you how you things you need to do to prepare yourself and get ready for to receive it. Get out of that that um, that get 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 mode that we're in with God most all the time, and get into that give 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 mode uh, to the kingdom that we can give through the power. In other words, Father, what do you want me to do with this incredible gift this morning? At church, the pastor read out of the scripture, and I felt that I needed, as soon as he spoke it, I said, I'm going to put this in tonight's study. It's Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. I'm going to read all 10 verses. I hope you stay with me. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. It says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you formerly walked according to the age of this world and according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience says, you were dead in these trespasses. You, everybody that's listening to me were, was in this situation. In verse 3, among them, we all also once lived in the lust of our flesh, doing the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest, even as everybody else. And then verse 4, but God, but God's my 
two favorite words in the, in the whole of the Bible, but God. Being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And he raised us up and seated us together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. This isn't because you did something. This ain't because you tied to the church. This isn't because you've got, you got all this nice stuff. I built buildings. I've been on mission trips. You know, all these great things. This is a gift of God, this salvation. It is the gift, not of works, so that no one should boast. For we are his workmanship. We are Christ, God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we should walk in them. And the, and, and the last part of 10 says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. So when you pray, it's not enough just to ask for stuff. Pray that you fulfill the good works. Pray that you fulfill the good works God has prepared for you which includes baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues and the power that comes with that. My friend, you must, you must pray, ask in faith, and believe that this is a gift that you are entitled to if you meet all the steps. Meet all the steps. Amen? Number three, uh, be prepared. My friend, some physical things may in fact happen when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that's not uncommon. Stammering lips, tears, physical trembling, shaking may accompany this extraordinary experience as God's power. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm not just talking about a 12 volt battery here. I'm not talking about 120 that goes into your house. I'm talking about the power of God who spoke the world into existence. He simply said, let there be light and there was light. He simply said, let us build man after our image and there was Adam. He said, Adam needs somebody and there was Eve. This is God's power that the Holy Spirit is bringing. So things may happen to you. I don't know how many people do electricity. I don't like electricity. I tend to always touch the wrong thing. And it's like, ooh, man, that's, ooh, that, ooh, 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 that make you jump a little bit. Can you imagine the power of Almighty God, the one that spoke everything into existence? That ought to shake you up a little bit. Amen. So those things could happen. Uh, that power it just overwhelms a person's physical sense. However, however, do not try to manipulate the situation by stirring up your emotions. Don't get out of your seat and go down to the altar and say, man, I hope I get slain in the spirit. I'm going to fall on the floor, man. I know I'm going to be babbling and stuff because now you are trying to do that. You may have seen well-meaning Christians surround a friend who is praying for the baptism, and they may pray louder. They may get more expressive or try to prompt the friend in some way. Do this. Hit him in the head. Do this. Come on. You can go ahead and fall down. It's all right. It's all right to fall down. If you got to fall down, fall down. I'm pushing people and stuff like that, my friend. God does not work that way. God does not work that way. Do not seek the experience, rather seek more of Christ. A lot of people go to that altar and they come back and they're dejected. And they're, I'm probably getting a little bit ahead here, but the Spirit says, say this. And they just don't feel like they're worthy because somebody has been telling them, you got to do this and you got to do this and this is going to happen to you. And I promise you, this is going to happen to you. And reality is in Acts 2 and 4, it says, and they were filled, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them to speak. Remember this. The speaking in other tongues as the Spirit enables you to speak is the only recorded 
evidence of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. The only recorded evidence. Now, I don't doubt, and I have witnessed myself, people being slain in the Spirit. People begin to laugh. People begin singing. People begin dancing. People just just begin weeping and they fall on their face and, 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 and they're jumping around. I have seen these things happen. And these are things that I have seen in many places. And they are driven by the emotions of receiving the incredible gift. But make no mistake about it, my friend. If you do not experience those things, if you are not slain in the Spirit, if you don't feel an incredible desire to run around the church screaming and hollering, singing and laughing, but you do speak in a language that only the Holy Spirit can enable you to speak, you, sir, ma'am, have received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. That, again, is the only recorded evidence of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. That is speaking in another language that the Spirit enabled them to speak. Amen? We're going to get done early, and I'm excited about this. And finally, let me just say number four. My friend, stay focused. Stay focused. You see, receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit, it's a choice. It's a choice you make. Some people never receive because they're waiting for that mystical uncontrollable experience that people have been telling them about all these uh, no more than God folks are telling them about all this incredible stuff you're going to fall on your face and they're expecting that and they go up there that's what they're looking for they're looking for that slain in the spirit they're looking for all that other stuff that is not the evidence of being, of, of, of being baptized in the Holy Spirit and so when they get there it's not happening. You see, but the Spirit does not overpower a person's will. That's why. You go up there expecting this thing, this, 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 and this. That's your will. That's your decision. You've decided how you're going to respond and react. Or you have decided if I do not respond and react like this guy did, then I'm not going to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. My friend, you must cooperate with and invite him into your life. You must cooperate with and invite the Spirit into your life. There are times when the Holy Spirit may seem to completely take over a person's uh, as a person speaks effortlessly in tongues. I, I know a lot of preachers, and we got one coming to town in just a few weeks, and and and, and he's going he'll bless your socks off if you can put it on your calendar and you can go to church more than just on Sunday morning maybe you can pick up a couple extra days i promise you this this uh, evangelist will bless your socks off filled with the holy spirit anointed by god to preach the word of god his reactions are different than my reactions but the spirit gives him that effortlessly ability to speak in tongues, to preach, to prophesy. That's what he does. But this is not how you are likely to exercise the gift on a regular daily basis. It's not said daily basis now. You see, the Bible teaches that spiritual gifts are subject to, that is, used at the discretion of those who receive them. You don't believe me? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 32 and 33. I'm going to read it to you. 1 Corinthians 14, 32 and 33. It says, The spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of saints. So God does the baptizing, but you, my friend, will be responsible for how you respond to it. Let me see if I can just take a minute and give you an example of how come God is not the author of confusion. How come things happen, uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the only, the only biblical evidence is the speaking of tongues. As we as Pentecostals begin to seek and search the baptism in the Holy Spirit in our daily lives, God moves in those lives. But as we as a congregation 
on a Sunday or during a revival are looking towards and trying to get people to understand and be prepared and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there's likely to be some people in the sanctuary and they don't have any idea or clue as to what this is, this baptism in the Holy Spirit. There is denominations, there is Christians that aren't there. They're, you know what? It, it doesn't mean they're less Christians. No, it just means they don't. They they're not into the gifts of the Spirit. They they don't want that. They're not interested in. It. it scares them. They don't understand it. Most likely, because of what I said just a little earlier, we get people up in the front screaming and hollering, and and people are knocking them on the forehead and telling them all these things are going to happen, and it scares them. And they don't understand it. And so if there's a bunch of, I don't really want to call it hogwash, but I've, t I've been in some situations where it does seem like hogwash, but it's not really hogwash. There are times when physical situations do take place, uh, but for the most part, this would be very confusing to somebody that didn't understand this thing called the Holy Spirit. And it would drive them away from the very thing that we're trying to drive them towards. We're trying to get them into a better relationship with God. We're trying to allow them to come into a place where God can fill them with the Holy Spirit that can change their lives, that can set on fire their desire to do the will of God, which is to what? The will of God is to preach, teach, and baptize. In the name of Jesus Christ, that is the will of God. You know, baptizing the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's what the power of the Holy Spirit does. Even the disciples, who are now apostles, they weren't even allowed to go do that before Acts chapter 2. They were instructed to go to the upper room and wait on the power that Father promised them. And that was baptism in the Holy Spirit. So how in the world in 2021 where the devil is running rampant, my friend, where evil is overtaking everything, how in the world are we, are we even thinking in our minds that we can defeat death and, 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 and not death, but Satan and all of his angels? How do we think we can defeat him without the power of the Holy Spirit when the very people that walked with Jesus the whole time he was here, that witnessed all of his miracles, that heard him speak all of his speaking engagements, they were instructed to wait for what I'm telling you you need to wait for. Paul explains it this way in 1 Corinthians 14, verses 18 and 19. And he says this, I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than you all. Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. He's trying to tell, what he's trying to say is, listen, I want people to understand this gift. I want you to understand the power of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And I don't want you to be afraid of it. So I'm not going to tell you all these. I don't know what's going to happen to you next week. Next week, we're going to receive. We're going we're gonna to take communion, and we're going to talk about receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit. My prayer is that when we finish next week, somebody that's been following us, that's been doing what we say to do, will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't know what's going to happen to you. You're probably in your house. You're sitting at your computer. You may be by yourself. And that's okay. I was, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit behind this wall that's behind me in my little den. At that time, it was my, my study. And I was just on my knees, and I was praying to God, and boom, he hit me. And, and I didn't jump around. I didn't, I didn't do all that stuff. I just began to speak in a language that I, only God and me understood. And that may be what happens to you. But I'm just trying to tell you, don't let what you've seen or heard about all these things that are happening, not that they won't. Remember I said... It's not that it can happen. I have seen people laughing and crying and, and, and dancing and, and falling down and, and being on the ground for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 minutes. 
just laying there in the Spirit of God. And, and, and I've seen that happen. They may have spoken a few words that I didn't understand. The rest of the time, they were just laying there. My son, Robert, the night he was burned at 86% of his body, came into my house, said, Dad, I won't do this no more. And he looked up and he said, God, I am sorry. And, it, and he hit the floor. And at that moment, he began to speak in a language that I did not know. He would speak a little bit. He would stop speaking a little bit. He was unable to dance. He was unable to run around. He was burned at 86% of his body. But God heard his cry and saved him and delivered him and poured his spirit into him all at the same time. So it can happen. It can happen. But if you're sitting around and you're expecting that to happen to you, that is a fence post. That's a, a, a door you have placed between you and God. Listen, let God do his work. So my prayer tonight is that you simply understand that you must get ready to receive God's gift. You must prepare yourself, your heart and your mind, in a way that God can pour into you this incredible gift of the Holy Spirit. You can't just come in and say, I want to be filled with the Spirit, but I don't want to do nothing else. I want to have the power, but I don't want to do the work. That's not how it works, my friend. That's not. I'm telling you, 95%, maybe 99%, that's not how it works. You got to do the work. You got to do the thing that we do. And that's worship God, seek his face, turn from our wicked ways. That's what you have to do. You have to have faith. My friend, there's a formula in scripture that you should follow, that you have to follow. Brothers and sisters, I do not know. I do know that people come to the altar. Again, I told you what happened to Robert. They received Jesus as their personal Savior, and bam, they're filled with the Holy Spirit. They're speaking in tongues, and the evidence is there. I have seen this happen. I just told you I've seen it happen in my kitchen. But my friend, it is so very far and few between. So for tonight, let me just remind you that getting ready to receive this incredible gift includes getting right with God, Ask in faith through prayer. Be prepared for whatever is going to take place at the time you are filled. To include, without a doubt, the speaking of tongues as the Spirit gives you the utterance. And finally, stay focused, my friend. Stay focused, my friend. And again I say, stay focused, my friend. Listen. If it doesn't happen to you when we complete this study, don't lose heart. Don't lose faith. Just continue to seek God. Continue to seek God. You don't have to be in a church setting, my friend. You don't have to be at this great church altar. You don't have to have this big worship band around you. You don't have to have all these people slapping you on the head and the back and the, hand and the face and stuff. And, and, and you don't have to have none of that. You have to have the presence of God. That's what you have to have. Now, I like these churches. I like all this worship music. I love when people pray for people. I think that's what we're called to do. But that's not a requirement for you to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Let me just look at this one real quick. Real, let, let me just read this to you. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, suddenly, a sound like a mighty rushing wind came from heaven. And that's how it's going to happen. Suddenly, this is going to happen. Amen? Amen. You have to have the presence of God. And you can do, you can, wherever. You can have the presence of God in your own prayer closet, in your dining room, your den, in your house. My son was in the kitchen, burned at 86% of his body. The presence of God fell on him. Do it at your workplace. Here's the bottom line, my friend. God is willing, able, and ready to deliver to you an incredible gift of His Holy Spirit. The question tonight is, are you ready to receive it? We spent four weeks getting you ready. We've looked at biblical facts. We've looked at 
uh, we've looked at uh, getting ready. We just did that tonight. All the biblical facts went over ten of them. We've read a ton of scripture. We've showed you evidence of the power of the Holy Spirit. We've showed you evidence where Jesus wants you to have, God wants you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So the question has to be answered, and only you can answer it. Are you ready? And if you're ready, I promise you God's going to deliver. And next week, we're going to finish up this portion of our study, I think, with receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We will do communion next week, so if you're watching me and you come to watch every week, make sure you have the elements with you, a grape juice or wine and, and, and some kind of a, a cracker or bread, whichever you choose. And we will do that next week. I fully expect, I'm praying right now, that God will do this for you. I understand, I want, need you to understand there's no specific lengthy formula to guarantee being baptized in the Holy Spirit. But next week we will look at some helpful patterns that you can follow as you pray and prepare to receive this powerful gift. Pray with me tonight. Father, man, I thank you so much for the Holy Spirit. I can't even imagine. I don't even want to think about how we would survive in this world without that comforter that you sent when you went up you took Jesus home to you, and your son promised us he would send another helper, another comforter, and that would be the Holy Spirit that would reside in us, on us, and around us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no matter where we are. And Father, I thank you for the gifts. I thank you for the baptism in the Holy Spirit that gives us the power to do the Great Commission. And Lord, I pray right now that you would begin to work into those that are watching tonight and those that will watch tomorrow or the next day, Lord. I pray, Father, that this video will be shared so that many people will understand this baptism in the Holy Spirit, that it becomes just, oh, I understand that now. I see what I got to do so that there'll be more powerful workers to do what you have called us to do in the kingdom of God. Thank you, Father, for this night. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, God bless you. I pray you have an incredible week in the Lord this coming week. And remember, seek God, ask in faith, be prepared, and stay focused. And as a way of announcement, I just, uh, today, this morning, I was able to nail down and, and make sure that this was going to happen. We have a, uh, an evangelist called Tim Brown. Uh, he has preached... Uh, a lot of messages I've been to, this guy was telling you about, anointed by the Holy Spirit, anointed by God to bring deliverance uh, to the to healing to the sick, deliverance to those that need delivered. Uh, he's just an incredible evangelist, um, and he will be in town. He will be at the Chapel of the Holy Spirit. That's WKCL Radio's uh, chapel right there on College Park Road. It will be July 15, 16, and 17. Services will start at 7 p.m. each night. And what we're going to plan on doing is having a little, a little fellowship after so that you would be able to meet with the evangelist and have him pray with you or bring stuff that we need to pray for. Uh, I fully, absolutely, positively, without a doubt, have no doubt at all that people will be healed, people will be re uh, relieved, people will, will see um, uh, 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 alcoholism, drug addiction, I think these things are ready to fall. That is what needs to happen. And we need revival, revival, revival. And revival needs to start with you. So you need to be in the seats of Chapel of the Holy Spirit on College Park Road, July 15, 16, and 17. That's a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And Evangelist Tim Brown and the Holy Spirit will bring to you that what you need. I'll see you next Sunday at 6 p.m. Good night and God bless.